So welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to one more session at this great conference you could start. My name is Dennis Torres. I'll be talking about going to Azure SQL. Admin difference no one told you before. So uh, I'm a database MPI administrator, data platform MVP, have some Microsoft certifications, and you can see my contacts on the right side of the screen. Uh, feel free to get in touch. It will be a pleasure to keep in touch. Uh, thank you for the partners of this conference. Without this partner, this conference would not be happening. And what we will be talking about. Let's talk about integrated authentication in Azure SQL database. Database options, some interesting database options, TDE, read come to the snapshot and query store. Resource governor on an Azure SQL DB, SQL DB tips, and automation, automation of tasks using one box. So, integrated authentication. How does integration authentication work on an Azure SQL database in the cloud? Uh, it's very common that the developers just provision an Azure SQL DB and create an admin user who is logging in password and that's it. Well, it works, but it's not the safest way to make this. Integrated authentication is better. If you can authenticate using an Azure user, an Active Directory user, that's better. And the secret is the, that we need to set the SQL administrator. Isn't, is, this is essential for integrated security. We need to set in the portal, in the Azure portal, who is the SQL administrator. Here, this screen, uh, inside the configuration of Azure SQL DB, we need to set the Active Directory Admin. Once we set the Active Directory Admin on this screen, we can start configuring uh, integrated authentication. So, in uh, SSMS, for example, we can use Active Directory with support to MFA to authenticate to our Azure SQL. It's no problem at all. Let's see this working. So, here I have my portal. I created a resource group for this conference, SQL Start, and I already created some resources. I already provisioned some resources, including the SQL database and the SQL server. I need to define the admin of the server to enable integrated authentication. So we'll go to the SQL server and Azure Active Directory. Here I can define who will be the Active Directory admin of our SQL Server. I should set admin. But the problem is, should I choose one employee of the company, one person? That's not good at all. It's not a good management practice, a, a good practice to manage the security. What should we do? We should have a group, a user, a user security group. And in this case, I created the group called SQL Admins. How did I create this group? Well, even if I never touched it, uh, we have access to Azure Active Directory inside Azure. Even if uh, everything that I care is only about Azure SQL, we have the Azure Active Directory access. I can define groups inside Azure Active Directory. And I define the group SQL Admin. So I can include inside SQL Admin the user that will 
administrate my Azure SQL. And then that's it. Uh, now I already show shows the SQL admins as the administrator of the SQL Server, but this screen has a surprise for us. A new feature that uh, were released just, I think, just a few days ago. This feature was promised by, for us by many weeks, but it was not here before. Azure Active Directory Authentication only. It's more than allowing integrated authentication. It's about only allowing integrated authentication. If I enable this option, my Azure SQL DB will only allow integrated authentication and not allow, not even the administrator that I configured when I provisioned the database. So only users authenticating using integrated authentication will be able to access my Azure SQL. Let's save this configuration. I will not enable this option for now, but it's very interesting to know that we have this new possibility to tighten our security, to improve the security of our environment. So uh, this is done. Let me open SSMS. I have a connection here, but this connection is made with my SQL user. Let's make another connection, but using my Active Directory user. I'm connecting to SQL Start Demo. Then I will change, change to Active Directory Universal with support to MFA supporting MFA. I include my account. And let's choose one that is included in the group. I can see the members here. This one, I use this one. And since I'm using integrated authentication with the Azure Active Directory, it opens the Microsoft window for me to make my authentication with Azure Active Directory. Let me double check the name of the server, but it's there. You start demo database windows.net. I need to be sure that um, the file is open for me. My IP is included. Yes. And that's it. Mm, there was no difference, but let's go ahead. And here I have my connection using my Active Directory user. Exactly what I mean. Uh, using the Active Directory user is way safer than using regular SQL users. The connection will be way safer than using regular SQL users. 
And what, what about your application that is inside Azure, your Azure functions and so on? You can just define what Azure call as a managed identity to them and give them permissions to use SQL Server. There is no problem. So, uh, to enable the integrated authentication, you need to set the Active Directory Administrator, the Azure Active Directory Administrator for your Azure SQL. Let's talk about some database options. Uh, we'll talk about database options and let's go directly to a demonstration. Let me open my first script. And on this first script, I'm making a query over the sys databases DMV. And let me retrieve information to see about some options if they are enabled or not. I am retrieving query store, read commented snapshot, is encrypted, is accelerated database recovery. So uh, let's execute this. And it may be a surprise to some, but all these options are enabled. All these options are enabled. What this means? Well, is encrypted is the transparent data encryption. It means that uh, our Azure SQL database is not relying only on the encrypted rest that is used by the storage accounts on Azure. It's making a double encryption using TDE. If I have any requirement to use a custom key for that, I can configure the server to use a custom key for that. Not a problem at all. Uh, but uh, it's encrypted using a managed key by default. Query store is zone. It means that, that by default, it's keeping a history of the queries and the performance of the queries and the query plans that have been executed. So if I need to check what happened that a query was better before and is not so performant at the moment, I can check information on query store. Query store is enabled by default. Read come to the snapshot on may be a surprise to many of you. It's on by default. When you migrate your on-premise application to an Azure SQL database, RCSI, like it's usually known, it's on by default. The accelerated database recovery is also on. That's good. This means that in case of a failure, our database will be recovered faster. But the accelerated database recovery changes a bit the behavior of the read to the snapshot as well. One affects the other. So since ADR is enabled, the read to the snapshot have, has a, a, a small difference on its behavior. Let's analyze a bit better these details. Transparent data encryption, it uses a self-managed transparent data encryption. Uh, the key is managed by the server unless we decide to change the key. I could change the key if I would like. RCSI. Read commented snapshot isolation level. What this means? For the ones who has never heard about RCSI, this is a configuration on database level that transforms every transaction that arrives in the database using the regular read commented isolation to a snapshot isolation level. But it's not really the snapshot isolation level. 
The isolation level created by this configuration, RCSI, is a bit different than the regular snapshot isolation level that you could define in a transaction. So it's a unique isolation level created by a configuration on the database level. Okay, fine. How this affects your application? You may already be thinking that this will affect your application, but how will this affect your application? This is the full isolation level for Azure SQLDB. And this is how it affects your application. No lock has no use anymore. There are many stubborn developers that insist in be using no lock. They, they keep that old belief that the no lock will make their web applications faster. All the queries that they use to feed their web pages needs to use no lock to make uh, to be executed faster, especially if if the application has a huge number of access. There are many developers with this very old belief. The problem is no lock is absolutely terrible for the database. It's terrible for the transactions and it can be replaced by a CSI. Even on premise, if you are on premise, you can just turn on this configuration on your database and get rid of all your no lock in your database queries. And that's it. So our CSI can totally replace the no lock. And that's it. And it's better than the no lock. And there is no meaning anymore to keep no lock over an Azure SQL DB. Uh, so, if the developers were stubborn and were uh, thinking about, oh, I'm not planning to enable a CSI now, let's keep the no lock, it's working, let's keep it there. Now, in an Azure SQL database, there is no meaning in keep this there anymore. Any possible problem that the developers want to solve, they are already solved by the RCSI configuration. This configuration already solves any locking problem that a web application could have. Uh, there is no meaning in the no lock be there anymore. The no lock will only cause the problem and not bring any benefit because the benefit is already provided by by the RCSI. That's it. So the point is, if you have applications using no lock over an Azure SQL DB, these applications are, are, are acting like the guy that, that uh, eats an ice cream on the face because there is no meaning in keeping a no lock in an Azure SQL DB. There is a small difference about the behavior of RCSI and when the accelerated database recovery is enabled. First, let's explain a bit more about RCSI and no lock. Why the no lock is so bad? Usually the developers think that the no lock is not that bad because uh, they think, oh, I will never go back a transaction, so I will not have transaction inconsistencies. I will not read data that is not committed because I will not never go back transactions anyway. So then it's safe to use no lock because my application is not rolling back transactions. Yeah, but this is a very misinformed line of thought because the no lock affects everything, everything. For example, you may know the concept of page split. 
page is split in a, in a table, in an indexed table, in a clustered index. When there is no space to insert a record inside the page, what SQL Server will do? SQL Server will break the content of the page, get the page, break the content of the page in two, uh, move the content of that page to another page, delete half of the records and then insert the record. If a query with no lock is executed while SQL Server is making a page split, is breaking this down, the query will, will pass over the SQL Server operation and will be able to read the data that SQL Server is working with. Uh, so some records may be duplicated or some records may not appear at all. All the records will be duplicated or they will not appear at all. And this is an example of how bad and unpredictable no log can be. A, a page split in a table, in an indexed table, can make the result become completely different because the use of no log. RCSI works differently. It used a set of control tables called version store to control the version of the records. Basically, no select will cause locks inside the database. No select will cause locks inside the database. But when some update or delete cause a lock, uh, the RCSI will use the version store to control this and will still not block the reading operations. That's the, the result the developers expect from the no lock, but RC, RCSI can provide this result in a safer way. However, the details about Azure SQL Database, if ADR is enabled to get the RCSI, and ADR is enabled to get the RCSI, instead of using TempDB to, to store the version store, the version store will be inside the database, inside the same database and not in TempDB. Uh, it's, it's a practice and you read in many documentations. If you enable RCSI, Take a look on the size of TempDB. RCSI will store a version store inside TempDB and you need to take care about this version store. However, this change when accelerated database recovery is enabled. When accelerated database recovery is enabled, the version store is in the database, not in the TempDB. The place changes and you need to check a different place for the version store. Let's see some demonstrations about this. So and close the demonstration one and open some additional demonstrations. Let's start with demo two, where I'm making an update on a customer from the table sales LT customer. This database that I'm using, ADV Works, is a demo database. When you are provisioning an Azure SQL database from the portal, you can ask it to get a simple database. And this is the database that you will get. So uh, having provision of this simple database, I can use the tables on this database. One of these tables is the sales LT customers. So let's make an update of this sales LT customer. So I updated the sales LT customer. And in another window, let's try to read the customers. The most expected result when I execute this select is that this select would get 
block it. This select would get blocked because I make an update in one of the customers. So this select would need to wait for the update transaction to be completed. And that's what makes web application a bit more slower. And that's what makes the developer believe that they need to put no lock on all the queries. But let's execute this query and see that I'm not blocked at all. There is nothing blocking this query. Why? Because on Azure SQL DB, this is using RCSI. This is using read computed snapshot isolation. So the update doesn't block the select. Uh, let's get the customer ID one. Here, the customer ID one. What's the middle name of customer ID one? The middle name of customer ID one is N. So it didn't block my select and it gave me a very safe reply because it's giving me the information that is committed to on the database. They bring to me the information that is not committed on the database. So it's giving me the information that is already in the database. So uh, I can try to check some information about locks. This query here. Uh, let me just change the name of the database. Okay, the name of the database is ADV Works. Uh, so this query here is drawing some system tables, sysdm trend locks, partitions, and index to try to read the active locks in the database. And there are active locks in the database. More than that, there are exclusive locks in the database. Yeah, the update operation created an exclusive lock on the database, but the RCSI isolation level makes my query simply box. It simply brings the result back. Let's try to identify blocked process. Uh, I can use this query, sys process, and join with information from the MSX SQL text to see if any process is blocked and uh, there is no blocked process. So the updated is not blocking anyone, anyone, in no way. The update is not blocked and blocking anyone. Uh, if I try to read the tempdb version of the version store, it's empty. Uh, this table with the is the tempdb version store is empty. I'm not on TempDB, but DM, the DMV basically uh, represents the TempDB version store, and it's completely empty. The data is on the local database version store. It's a different DMV. On the local database version store, then I can read the information that is kept by RCSI. So RCSI is keeping information about some records inside the version store. It's indicating here the database ID, what uh, database uh, it are being get, are be, and I've been kept in version store. Why? Because I have a, a record 
which has a exclusive lock. So the version store is used to recover the previous version of this database. And they can even make some analysis of the version store used usage inside my database. What's the size of the version store inside my database? Uh, we may need to manage that because the version store will get some space inside our database. And we may not be even aware of that. Uh, we may not be even noticing that, that the version store will get some space from our database. It will. That's it. Okay, so so in summary, what we saw now is that if you migrated your Azure SQL, if you migrated your application to Azure SQL and you are still using no lock in your application, you are losing integrity. You are facing the lost integrity caused by the no lock and getting no benefit in exchange. No benefit in exchange. So that's bad. That's bad. And it's something that many people may not be totally aware. Now let's talk about resource governor. Why will we talk about resource governor in relation to Azure SQL database? Resource governor is a server level feature. Uh, how could we deal with it in relation to an Azure SQL database? Well, we will not configure resource governor in an Azure SQL database. No way. We will not do that. However, what happens? Uh, our Azure SQL has a limit of performance. In this case, I provisioned this database using DTUs, the minimum amount of DTUs possible. If I'm not mistaken, I provisioned using five DTUs. So, the resource governor can be used to identify some throttling of resources in our Azure SQL. We have many system DMVs from resource governor that you point to us when Azure is throttling resources on our Azure SQL because our queries are trying to go beyond the resources we reserved for our database. So we can identify problems on our database using resource governor's DMV. That's the trick. So, demonstration about that. Let's see how this works. So, I have here some queries reading information about CSDM resource governor workload group history X. So I'm getting a history of the workload groups in resource governor. So I'm looking for a workload group, which name is user primary DB, primary group dot DB percentage. But this percentage needs to be the ID of our database. This is a pattern that resource governor use to define the name of the workload groups in resource governor. User primary group dot db and the ID of our database. So we can make a query inside this DMV 
looking for information about this workload group. So we'll have information specifically about our database. So if I execute this query, I get information about recent history. Recent history duration minutes, 43 minutes. CPU delayed intervals, four. Delta CPU active MS, 968. Delta CPU delayed MS, 740. So uh, at some point, this, this, this CQDB may have gone beyond, went beyond the details that were reserved by, for it. Let's analyze this in more details, but let's cause some problems to the CQDB. Database, let me get the name of the database. It's uh, CQ Start Demo. database windows.net what is this that i'm using i'm using an application called sql quick stress this application was created by adam mechanic to create some level of stress in a database so i will use a regular login a sql user login in this case this application is not prepared for Azure Active Directory. Test connection, okay. Let's put a simple select star from sales LT customer. And go. Oh, sorry, too fast because I have not specified the number of iterations. Let's say 10 iterations, 15 iterations in 15 threads. It means that it's like 15 different users are executing this query in sequence 15 times each user. So go and it's executed the iterations and creating some level of stress on our database server. That is it. Uh, let's take a look on this, the detail again of the information related to you see the Delta, Delta CPU delayed MS and the count of delayed intervals got a bit higher. It means uh, our CQDB was affected by CPU throttling. And I can, I can calculate how it was affected with this query. There are some calculations here checking how it was affected and making some calculations, converting milliseconds to minutes. So especially after this CQ stress, uh, the CPU was delaying 67%. Uh, but the intervals were only seven, so not that much yet, but it is something to think about. Session expired.
So, let's go again, analyze our SQL database. And here we see the two users, uh, it, it didn't reach the maximum, but it affected the CPU user, the amount of queries that appeared in the server at the same time affected the CPU usage. And more interesting than that, this is more examples that I, I created here based on resource governor system DMVs. They are included in a set of analysis queries for SQL DBs that are called SQL DBs tips. And these queries are available inside GitHub. So I can execute these queries. Let's wait a bit while they complete. Well, while it's executing, let's review the PowerPoint where I mentioned this as well. The SQLDB tips uh, is available on GitHub and executes many tests on our Azure SQL database and provides suggestions and guidance about what we should do in relation to our Azure SQL database. And it's also a great way to study in details what we should monitor on our Azure SQL database by analyzing the queries inside this script. We can study in details what we should monitor on our SQL DB. This is the GitHub address. I recommend every Azure SQL DB user to get these scripts and use as a maintenance tool on your Azure SQL DB environment. So the demonstration, the query may be completed now. Let's take a look. Yes, the query is completed. Let's see the recommendations. There are notable network connectivity events found. There are problems with network connectivity. Recent CPU throttling found, what I just said, from the queries that we used on resource governor. Uh, there are recent CPU throttling found. There are opportunities to make row or page compression uh, on this database. Statistics may be out of date, and it would be interesting to investigate some top queries on this database. So take a look how organized is the result of the entire script when executed on an Azure SQL database. This is absolutely great and give us a good set of information to investigate. And it's saying that some statistics may be out of date. Well, then we get to another subject because maintenance and shadow maintenance, like index maintenance, for example, is something that we need on our Azure SQL database. But how can we make some a shadow maintenance on an Azure SQL database if we don't have a SQL Server agent. We don't have a SQL Server agent here. There is no SQL Server agent here. How can we do this maintenance here? Let's go to Azure. I already created here one other 
service which is called automation account. I call this service to so start automation. An automation account is used to make automation tasks, to schedule tasks, execute and schedule tasks over any Azure service. There it is. Uh, investigating a bit more, you will discover there are two options of automation, automation tasks, automated tasks in Azure SQL DB. One is the automation account. The automation account can be used not only for Azure SQL DB, but for any Azure service. Any Azure service can make use of the automation account without any problem. That's great. The second option is a exclusive option for Azure SQL. It works only for Azure SQL. It's called Elastic Database Jobs. It will only work on a C Azure SQL environment. It was initially planned for an architecture that is called database shedding, but can be used as a scheduler to manage scheduled tasks. No problem with that. But in this example, on this session, let's go with the automation account. Let's see how the automation account works. First, I need to define a credential. The credential will be used to log in to our database. And unfortunately, the credential will be a username and password. Let's call the SQL start cred and I use my SQL user SQL name and password. Uh, does it mean that since I'm using uh, automation, I can't enforce integrated security in Azure SQL? You can, you can. But if you decide to enforce integrated security in Azure SQL, you can't use the credentials of the automation account. You will need to use all the ways of authentication. and. The best ways of authentication are only managed by code, can only be done by code. So now I'm using credential to make it only a simple example. This is an automation account. Where do I start if I have a task and I want to uh, automate this task? Where should I start? So, we will start with runbooks. Runbooks are the tasks that we want to automate. The tasks that we want to automate, they are runbooks. And take a look. The runbooks can be a PowerShell runbook. I can develop the task using PowerShell can be a Python 2 runbook. I can develop the task using Python 2 or a graphical runbook. I can execute the task in a graphical way using a graphical runbook. All these are possible, are possible solutions for our problem. These three runbooks that appear here from the beginning, since the beginning, they are just simple. They are simple that the, autom uh, the automation account bring to us automatically. The automation account bring, bring these samples to us automatically. And these samples even appear, if I go to the resource group, these samples that the automation account brought to us, they appear here. But if I decide that I don't need and I don't want the samples, I can just delete the samples. There is no problem with that. They are only that, only samples. 
So we need to create a run book. What I will do? Will I develop the run book from scratch? I can develop a run book from scratch if I would like so. But I have a run book gallery. I have two run book galleries. One called that is get from GitHub comes from GitHub with many resources uh, created on GitHub and that we can use on our environment. And the other one, a PowerShell gallery, bringing many run books in PowerShell format. It is the PowerShell gallery. So we have the GitHub gallery and the PowerShell gallery. Let me uh, uh, search for index here. And I find two contributions to run books related to index in relation to SQL Server. Uh, one created by the Azure Automation Product Team, and the other it was a contribution made by me. Yes, we can contribute our, our run, run books to the gallery. There is a sequence of steps that we need to execute to make the contribution. However, these steps are not so clear or so exposed. Uh, in this run book, for example, I try to follow these steps, but this is not exactly what should appear here. This run book should be a bit different, so it would not work in this way. So let's get the run book offered by the Azure Automation Product Team. Okay, so I can see the PowerShell code that is used to create the run book. And it's not a regular PowerShell code, it's a PowerShell workflow. This is what's called PowerShell workflow. Let's import this PowerShell workflow. Let's call this run book will be called reindex. And okay. And that's it. So our PowerShell workflow is imported. Uh, I can make a refresh here. And we can easily see that uh, the demo run books are all published, but my reindex run book is only marked as a new run book, is not published. Why my run book is only marked as a new run book? Because I need to make some changes on this run book. First and most critical change is a trick that is not very well documented. Uh, the trick is a PowerShell workflow to be executed in a run book needs to have the same name of the run book itself. So I need to rename the PowerShell workflow to the index. So I rename the workflow to the index and save. That's it. Publish. Published. So my one book is published. It's here. So I can make a test with this one book. Let's test the one book using the start. When I use the start, it will ask me all the parameters for the execution of this one book. And I need to provide what is the SQL Server that I'll be using. The SQL Server is our SQL Start demo that I'll be using on this one book. Database ADV works. Credential name, it was SQL Start Cred. Then I have additional parameters that are optional. Uh, the, the percentage of fragmentation of the index 
let's say that I would like only sugar index, all the index that are, have more than 20% of fragmentation. The script is prepared to test that. Uh, the sequence self report in case it's not the default, 1433. Uh, rebuild the index offline. The default is to rebuild online, what is already good. So let's leave like that. Table, in case I want to fix this to check the index on, on a single table. No, I don't. So, okay. And it's executing the job. Let's wait a bit while, while it's executing the job. Status running. Completed. It completed our oh, book. The problem is it completed with 11 errors. 11 errors in your run book. How does one book can have 11 errors? How this can have 11 errors? If I go deep on the error message, I will see the message. Cannot find the object customer because it does not exist or you do not have permission. Cannot find the object customer. Uh, it tried to re-index the table customer and it failed. So it gave me 11 error message. That's not good at all. That's very bad. Why this happened? Because who created the code of this one book uh, forgot one very important detail. The tables, they can be inside a schema. The code of the run book is not considering the schema. It's trying to re-index the tables based only on the table name. So it will fail. It will always be wrong. It's a code mistake. It's a bug. A bug on the run book that was provided on the gallery. So we need to fix this bug. But luckily, it's very easy to fix this bug. What I was trying publishing that other run book was exactly to make this fix. But since, uh, since my attempt to publish was not successful yet, we can just fix this run book by changing the query, one of the queries that the run book use. So we can retrieve also the schema of the table. So we change one of the queries that the run book is using, this one, to retrieve the schema of the table. And we change this expression. This expression is resulting in the table name, the table name alone without the schema. We need the schema to be included as well. So I need to build this expression a bit more and include the schema as a result. There it is. I will save and publish. There it is. I can try start again. Include my information again, SQL start demo, database adventure works, SQL start cred, the rest I can leave empty. Okay, and start executing again. Let's wait some instants, some moments. Starting, running.
completed. My run book execution is completed. I can refresh this screen. I see two completed executions. I can analyze the second completed execution and I see the second one returned zero errors. If the script had returned to me an additional output confirming the tables that were indexed, it would be better. But at least reindexing and not returning errors is already a good thing. And then I can establish a shadow for this one book. Now the, the one book is working and I know this one book is working. I can establish a shadow for this one book. In fact, the shadow itself will be a shadow on the automation account level. I know I'm a one minute delayed. Uh, I will not take longer. So my SQL start is scheduled. Uh, it starts on, let's say that it starts on Sunday at 5 p.m. of Sunday. And I make it recurring every week. Every week on every Sunday. Expiration date, no. So I created the shadow for this one book. And while creating the shadow, I need also to set the parameters for the execution. Set the parameters for the execution of this one book. Again, the SQL Server name, the database name, ADV Works. Credential name, SQL start spread. The rest I leave empty. OK. OK. And my one book has a shadow to be executed every Sunday to make a reindex on every table on this SQL database that is fragmented and require reindex. Great, so a small review of what we saw. We saw integrated authentication and we saw that now we can force integrated authentication on an Azure SQL database. We saw database options, TT is enabled by default, RCSI is enabled by default, and this one is the one that caused most difference for us because there is no meaning anymore to use no lock on any application using Azure SQL database. Query Store is enabled for us. We have resource governor with system tables that can tell us if Azure is throttling our performance. We have a set of scripts to analyze our Azure SQL DB uh, execution and give us some recommendations of for our Azure SQL DB execution, and we have the automation runbooks to schedule tasks. And we can schedule tasks using PowerShell, PowerShell workflow, and so on. Any questions? Um, no, no, no questions so far. Okay. Thank you very much for inviting me to this great conference. Uh, I leave you everyone again with my contacts. Feel free to connect. It will be a pleasure to connect. If anyone has any questions later, it will be a pleasure to keep in touch. Ask me any questions by mail or any other communication. So thank you very much for inviting me for this session. Thank you very much, Dennis. Great session. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a nice day.